I'm out here bush hogging. That's what us Canadians call working the bush or clearing brush. So I'm bush hogging and I'm just pulling out all kinds of crap in here. And uh, I got to tell you with this machine, oh man, so good, so good. And not uh, the, the machine's actually really only moving the material. So I'm in here, I've got thick, right? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm dealing with, just thick brush. It's, it's hard to walk through and it sucks because uh, it's a fire risk. And also it makes it so that your forest is just, you can't even enjoy it. You can't really walk through it. So with a little bit of work, I'm getting this and I'm not cutting down trees. At least I'm not cutting down nice looking alive trees. I'm cutting down tiny snags here and there. That's what I call them, snags. And uh, any deadfall, but, I'm, but mostly really what's going on is the trimming of the brush with, I'm using lobbers. And then I come in with a chainsaw and I just chainsaw up all the debris that's on the ground. So you can see here, it's fairly, uh, I'm making little caches, good stuff that I'll use for probably propagating mushrooms in this, in this little forest grove that I'm developing here. And uh, what I'll do is it's mostly handwork. The machine just moves the brush because I don't want to tamper with the forest floor here. I want to keep my forest floor. I love it. It's It feels so nice to walk on. Once you get all the sketchy sticks out of the way, it's really lovely for walking in bare feet. And I imagine the, the grounding effect, especially considering that I'm so close to water here because I have my other pond right in here. Um, the grounding effect might, must be quite amazing. And I just find the ther the therapeutic feeling of, of being here is amazing. So this is something that I'm excited to do this year is really open up a big chunk of this forest and if you've watched any of my vlogs in the last little while, you might have seen my ponds. Probably talked about them a lot during the fall and a bit over the winter. I'm downstream from those ponds, but I'm in this same water draw that basically all the snow melts to. It's a watershed up here. All the snow melts into this direction, at least on this whole mountain ridge that I'm on. And it comes to this point. And it's amazing how much water is moving through here. This is still flowing right now. So this is actually the area, which is the, um, it's the spillway of the bottom pond. And check out this. My kids have made this into a super fun play area where they're manipulating the water and, 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 and tripping out on the, the movement of water. I, I always found it uh, fascinating when I was a kid and, and still find it just as fascinating today. But we've got my... So that's my culvert. So this is what's coming out of my whole pond system. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe one takeaway from this video will be the value of clearing brush and why bush hogging is good. I mean, I, I mentioned it a bit already, but there's, a, there's, a, there's another reason here. But just to reiterate, it, a, it uh, reduces your fire risk significantly because it opens up the forest floor it allows light to get in there and new green will come up, grass even. Uh, it allows us to walk through it, which actually helps pack down the, the forest floor, which is good for it. It actually encourages mycelium growth. And um, of course, it beautifies it, makes it more recreational for us so we can enjoy it. But here's the thing that's been really sweet is I've, I've realized that I could easily make another pond in this draw. It would be smaller than both of them. It would be because the, the, the reservoir pond up top is the biggest one. It, it, it holds, I estimate, maybe 900 to a million liters of water. And then the one below it, about a third of that. So 350, I think it was, I roughly measured it. This would be even smaller. But the cool thing about it, it would allow me to more passively hold water in, the, in this area because it's already sitting here. So you can see this, the pool in here. This is because this little stretch of land that I'm walking in, and just a day ago, I could barely walk through here. It was so hairy. Um, this little stretch of land, the topography becomes very gentle. So there's a lot of slope on my property. It's very interesting in that way. That's what I like about it. I, I love interesting topography. I love microclimates and all these little spaces. And so, so here, we'll just slide up here for a second and I'll show you. This is the catchment pond, the main catchment pond. And it's still got quite a bit of ice on it. And this pond is amazing. It's the, it's the reservoir pond that's leaking. This pond is amazing. I'm quite confident that I'm going to have water sitting in here for a while. Like it's anything that's spilling over down here is coming in mostly from other melt 
around us. And of course, some is going into that pond as well, but I could make another pond. I measured it. It could be about 72 feet long and 16 feet wide. So I took my laser level in here and I measured these blue flags here represent the end of where this pond might be. And then these pink flags here represent the high side there and then the high side on that side. And I kind of came up with a, a rough measurement, but the thing that's really cool about it and which makes me quite confident that just by taking away this material in here, I'll get a, a couple benefits. One, I'll get the material. I want more material because I want to extend some terraces and I've got some new things that I want to do that I want soil for. So I have a use for the material. Um, and I'll get two types of material out of that, I'll, right? I'll get, uh, I'll have to scrape away the, the forest floor rooty stuff, all that, but then I'll have probably a good amount of topsoil because this had been collecting water for a long time. So a good amount of topsoil and good amount of subsoil. Basically just mineral soil without rocks. I really need material like that for some other projects on the property. And then I'm going to get a huge, another huge chunk of water. So the thing that's really neat is at this end here where the blue flags are, the blue and pink flags, that's the, this, that, that's the high side of the pond. It's only 30 inches higher than the blue flags just down here, almost where my finger is, where that pink one is, the end of this. And so the, why that's important is that you don't want to build ponds typically in areas where the, 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 the ground is sloping too much because then you have to have a ton of material to put on the low side to bring that low side at least to an equilibrium uh, at two high points where you can get a, a stable level of water. So it, it, it's um, uneconomical as far as resources are concerned and machine work to build ponds on steep places. Though people do it sometimes, there's a reason for it. In a gulch, it could make sense. In a very narrow gulch, which is uh, a valley going downhill, basically. You might, that might make sense in that way. But typically, you wanna build ponds on areas where the land really stabilizes so that you don't have to make a huge dam on the low side, which is what I had to do on the reservoir pond. It wasn't a huge dam, but we had to make a fairly decent sized dam. And we're actually gonna make it bigger uh, this year in the summer. But this way, with this pond, essentially, I can just come in here with the machine. Of course, I got a lot more clearing out to do. And I'll do it when it's dead dry in the summer. And I, that's why I flagged it out to mark out this area. I'm basically just going to come in here and just dig as deep as I can without creating too much of a steep embankment on the side. So I might only be able to get in some places a few feet deep, but maybe in some places I'll be able to get up to 10 feet deep. And that would be enough of a cavity to hold uh, a bunch of water here. And it's the beautiful thing is that this is minimal impact. Really, you know, I'd love to hear your opinion. Leave it in the comments if you think I'm out of, off my rocker. But I really think it's a total win-win-win. Because I don't see any ecological downside to it. Except perhaps some of the trees around might come down over time. But this water was already here. All I'm doing is getting some of that soil out. And roots won't sit in areas where it's just soggy all the time. Well, certain roots. It depends on the trees. These cedars love it. But they also hold very well near edges of water. So I'm hoping that I can more or less just preserve this exact area. Take out. I've, I, I've marked a couple. You can see some spray paint on trees. These are the ones that I want to take out. But I don't need to take out that much, actually. And I think I can, because I don't have to make a dam or anything, I can leave trees up fairly close to the edge of the pond, just like I did with the, the catchment pond up here. So that's, that's, uh, that's what's going on in the forest here. A lot of fun. I love bushwork. It is the, it's, uh, I love farming, but I think I like bushwork more now because it's newer to me. I've been farming for so long, but bushwork actually is what I did before farming. I used to work in the bush, tree planting in the Canadian bush. And I always liked that work, but had many years off. Now I've got uh, opportunity to do it here again and I love it it's super rewarding especially when the kids come out here I mean I've basically created this is at least 4,000 square feet right now of livable walkable area that you could hang out in you could you have a picnic in here so yeah that's what I'm up to folks hope you guys are having a super day and I'll see you in the next video